However, the Chinese soil sample implies the lunar rocks are some 0.016% water. The Apollo samples contained up to 0.06% by weight water, which is in the range of water in earth rocks. So he, he was talking about that to start with. And then I replied saying, thanks for forwarding the paper, makes for interesting reading. Maybe Rasa will be able to comment further in due course. Their comment, that's the Chinese, that they don't doubt the landings, but do question the origin of NASA samples is most revealing and does not really make much sense, especially given the very carefully chosen words in the report. I am used to reading between the lines to catch inferences, which in this case is, in my opinion, very clear. That's me speaking. Of course they do not question the landings. If they had done so, many sources of information, uh, the Chinese not questioning the landings, the many sources of information would have been immediately closed to them by NASA. Technical information and the minute levels of elements in the NASA samples, allegedly from the lunar surface, can be observed and reported on without raising too many red flags. That's what I said to Jara, which went to Raza as well. Raza replied to Jara forwarding the article, and Raza says to Jara, thanks Jara for finding both the article and the research paper. In fact, I do know the people who wrote the research paper. He's well connected. Yep. But the article and the web page it came from was new to me. It is an interesting web page full of interesting articles, all of them very pro-China, of course. But they do have a conspiracy theory flavor to them. There are many web pages that are written in Chinese. This is the first one I saw which was written in English. Anyway, you wouldn't want to chalk this off as bad reporting. Perhaps the person who wrote the article had read the research papers but didn't understand them properly. Anyway, here in China, we all know that no human has ever set foot on the lunar surface. But it could be considered unprofessional to talk about that. Plenty of Chinese web pages do talk about it, but none from anybody who works in any government position. Government workers know that they aren't supposed to expose the Apollo missions. There's a saying in China, keep your friends close, but keep your enemies closer. But that's just about what he said, that everyone in, in the space agency knows for a fact that those... Exactly. They know for a fact. I, I then reply to Raza. Thank you, Raza, for your on-the-spot reporting. Every little piece of the puzzle, when revealed, adds to a more complete picture of what is happening in various countries, such as China, who know about spaceflight. One day the complete picture will become visible. We certainly do live in interesting times. Raza then replies to me and says, let me add one more piece of the puzzle regarding China. I reported about this in the last Apollo Detectives, that's Ben Emlyn Jones. But that show was just so incredibly long and packed full of info, I think most people will have missed the point. It was nearly three hours long, and mainly Rasa talking about it. Very interesting report. Hasn't been seen by that many people, actually. China's official stance is this. We're not going to expose your Apollo missions as a hoax nor are we going to support it as being the real thing. So what happened was China published a report saying, we found traces of the previous Apollo missions. That's in the English version of the report. They didn't say what those traces were. They just said they could see them. As soon as they reported this, the NASA fanboys jumped all over it and started saying, you see, even China has now verified that our moon landings were real. Immediately, China removed the report from the web. That is why you can only now find it on the Wayback Machine. The official report has been removed because China didn't want NASA fanboys to use this as an excuse to pretend that China were backing up their Apollo missions. China are playing hardball with this one. 
published February the 6th in Beijing. China on Monday published a full coverage map of the moon, as well as several high resolution images of the celestial body captured by the country's second moon orbiter, Chang'e 2. The map and images released by the State Administration of Science, Technology and Industry for National Defense are the highest resolution photos of the entirety of the moon's surface to be published so far, said Lin Donggu, Deputy Chief Commander of China's Space Probe Project. The images were photographed by a charge couple device, CCD stereo camera, on a Chang'e 2 from heights of 100 kilometers and 15 kilometers above the lunar surface between October 2010 and May 2011, according to the statement. The resolution of the images obtained from Chang'e 2 is 17 times greater than those taken by the predecessor, Chang'e 1. If there were airports and harbors on the moon, the Chang'e 1 could simply identify them while the Chang'e 2 will be able to detect planes or ships inside of them. That was from the Institute of Remote Sensing Applications under the Chinese Academy of Sciences. The scientists also spotted, quote, traces of the previous Apollo missions in the images, that they don't say what those traces were. It could be anything, it could be a crash rocket, Several countries, including the United States, have obtained lunar images with higher resolution, but have not published full coverage images of the moon with a resolution of seven meters or greater. Anyway, that's the report that the fanboys jumped on and said, look, China have seen Apollo. No, it's not what the Chinese said. They were very careful to word what they actually say. The scientists also spotted traces of the previous Apollo missions. That's all they said. It doesn't say what the traces were. It doesn't say where they were. It doesn't say anything about them. It's China being very clever and maintaining their cordial relationships with America by not publicly saying that there were no such landings. China's position is that we don't deny the Apollo missions we don't confirm them either because we can't now if they didn't happen if the Apollo missions didn't happen the way NASA says they happen what does that mean what does that imply it implies that China know a how difficult it is to land on the lunar surface with humans I'm not talking about unmanned satellites getting an unmanned satellite to the moon is relatively straightforward Russia's done it China's done it, America's done it, Israel very nearly succeeded. These are all unmanned except for Apollo. And if China know their space travel and they have enough information to work on, you say that humans would be severely affected. Now, I'm not saying that's what China said, but they would have researched it to the extent that Russia did originally. Remember the famous quote from Bernard Lovell? when he asked the Russians, when are you going to send men to the moon? He said, we intend to do so as soon as we can, but we want to ensure their safe return due to the dangers of radiation. The Russians knew about it, and the Russians assumed America knew about it too. And the Chinese space agency know about it. Any halfway decent space agency knows about it. But how do you resolve the problem? That's what they've been working on. 50, 50, 60 years they've been working on this radiation problem. Ever since Professor James Van Allen, after whom the famous belts are named, said back in 1958 in his Scientific American article, we will need to protect astronauts from the dangers of radiation. He knew about it. America knew about it. Everybody knows about it. And America are the only people who've ever sent humans, allegedly sent humans, beyond it. China knows that that's not possible. Russia knows that it's not possible until you can protect them. Maybe not such good chess players as the Chinese are, are playing a very different game. They're not denying Apollo, but they're not confirming it. And that's the difference. Because they wish to maintain cordial relations with America.
But it's also interesting that China is the one major space nation that does not have a part in the International Space Station. So they're going to launch their own space station and Russia have now said that they're pulling out of the International Space Station in two years time. Whoops, that's going to be a problem. If China are involved in their own space station, it would imply that maybe China and Russia are going to work together on a space station. But it's interesting if they have a space station up there already. I mean, I've read some articles that indicates that the Russians already have their own up there. So is that true or not? I don't know if the Russians have, but the Chinese have. They're launching it's the Long March rockets. We had one return to Earth a, a few days back. You see it burning up in the atmosphere. And that, that's part of the construction of the Chinese space station. Yeah, well, Scott was mentioning something about the Russians, but I don't know if they ever came to fruition with another station up there. Are they hiding it? Uh, the thing is, if they're hiding it, well, it's going to show up on radar. The United NORAD's definitely going to pick it up if it's up there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they will. I'm not sure what's happening on that, because I think Russia have got other things on their minds at the moment. I think yeah. the space station is possibly not a priority thing to be achieving. But they're definitely not going to get anywhere outside of this solar system or anywhere within it that's a reasonable distance with rocket propulsion. It's not going to happen. Exactly. That is a key point. So they have to come up with some other exotic propulsion system. I mean, unfortunately, we don't live that long. So, you know, speaking of decades or, or you know, 50 years or 100 years, and then they want to go into these ships that are generation ships. Well, that's not going to work either. Not the way they're doing it. No, of course not. Because they can't get there using basically 16th century Chinese rocket technology. It was the Chinese who first came out with rockets. They're using chemical rockets liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen, liquid methane, all the other propulsion. That's very, very 19th century. I mean, they haven't really advanced. They're trying to. I mean, that's the kind of thing they're going to have to come up with. That's the kind of propulsion system that these guys are going to have to start thinking about. And forget all this warp and drive theory. It's not going to work. You can't just stretch space and then snap it back like a rubber band. What's going to happen if there's civilizations on these other planets? Or what's going to happen to all the planets and stars when space does snap back again? It's going to be like pulling a, a rubber band with pool balls in it and letting it go. And now you're firing the eight ball at all of these. It's all, everything's going to come crashing together. So that's not going to work. No, exactly. It worked in Star Trek. Star Trek was a wonderful fantasy film. But Gene Rodenberry, who was the main producer of that, he knew a great deal. He was putting a lot of information into the Star Trek, the original Star Trek, not the recent stuff, the original Star Trek series. He was putting a lot of information into that. Yeah, it's because he was the one that was sitting, listening to NASA's warp theories. He was actually sitting inside of the of the engineering department listening to these guys and taking notes and that's where he got this warp drive from. Yeah. You can't just put it yourself in a bubble and then stretch space and then ride along it. Well that's fine but what's going to happen when you have to let go and release? All these planets are going to be crashing together. <laughs> can't have that happening. You can't do it. Now you're going to destroy everything. And if those planets come crashing together, that means it's going to throw the sun out of whack, which means that the Earth, you might as well kiss all life on Earth goodbye. Yep. And this is what you see a lot of these other fellows doing. As soon as they'll start going on that topic, and then they will say, well, you guys don't know what you're doing, or, or this doesn't work, or that doesn't work. And he says, well, stop the film and read the article. NASA's own articles, they're not there just for eye candy, they're there so you could stop it and read for yourself what NASA's putting out. And yeah. then go on to Alice.com and look at the stuff that we're putting out. So I'm sorry, but you can't help people like that because they don't want to learn. They don't want to learn. They don't. No, they don't. And it would upset their world view to the point where they're going to question a lot more than just the moon landings. That is the best 
defence you can make. You just say, produce your evidence to show that we are wrong. Just produce it. That's all yeah. we're asking. We're not making any comment about it. Just say, okay, you did this. Why did they do it 10 years ago? How did they know the vacuum was a problem 10 years ago? They make up these stories desperately trying to maintain their belief system. You know, it's tragic, really, if they're not prepared to look further. And as a point I've made probably several times, that nobody working at NASA now was working at NASA during the time of Apollo. So there's nobody there who knew what was going on. But they can read the reports. And Scott has been so very good, very diligent in locating the original reports, not the change reports. But it's interesting how reports are now updated, let's put it that way, changed from the original. If you get the original reports from the 1960s, 1970s, you'll find that NASA haven't done the experiments. They haven't done the vacuum testing. And yet they built this Glenn Research Center, the Sandusky Chamber, down in Ohio, named after John Glenn, the first American to orbit the Earth. They've done all the experiments, they say, but they don't produce any film of them. The film that you show of that chap falling over backwards, when he was actually in a vacuum, or in a ship vacuum, and it basically almost killed him, because they didn't know what was going to happen. Same way they didn't know what was going to happen if you pressurize oxygen inside a container, and then introduce a spark, electrical short. Well, yeah, I mean, look at Ron Fernay's book, and that was something that I uh, kind of wanted to discuss, because in Ron Fernay's book, he has the reports of seven instances where they have used pure oxygen pressurized in experiments that they were doing, and yeah. each time it detonated. The last one was when they put those rabbits in there, and yeah. the rabbits were bouncing around, and the fur and the static electricity went off and killed the rabbits, incinerated them. Uh, and yet they're still going to go in Apollo 1, and they're going to put three human beings inside of the same thing that these rabbits were incinerated in, and six experiments before that, and yet they should have learned their lesson after the after the seventh time. You think you would learn your lesson, wouldn't you? Oh, no, now let's go and put humans into this bomb and try it. So they knew. Of course they knew. Whether that was an intentional murderous activity or not, we can't be certain, but it's certainly a life-threatening situation. I mean, you learn from your lessons. That's usually the way things work. So you don't go and put humans in there. Where's the logic in this? That's how NASA found that getting humans into space, to the moon, not just into space, low Earth orbit, that's only 200 miles up. Mm. But into space, 240,000 miles away, was very, very hard to achieve safely because they had to return these guys to, the, to, to Earth. That was Kennedy's challenge. Land a man on the moon and return him safely to the Earth. Mm. So they had to return them safely to the Earth. Isn't the best way to ensure that that's happened is that they never left low Earth orbit and returned to Earth from that? So you could fulfill Kennedy's challenge. That's more than likely what happened. <laughs>